There are different graces, but the same Spirit. Different ministries, but the same Lord. Different works, but the same God, who accomplishes everything in everyone. Hay diferentes dones, pero el Espíritu es el mismo. Hay diferentes servicios, pero el Señor es el mismo. Hay diferentes actividades, pero Dios, que hace todos en todos, es el mismo. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. And with your spirit. It's good to be with you this morning. Uh, thank you for making the trip from the different corners of the diocese, and uh, it's great to be here to install our brothers as lectors today, another step on the way to their diaconate ordination. We're so proud of you and grateful for you and your wives and your family for all that you're doing to prepare yourselves uh, to lay down your lives in service of Christ and his church. So. Our, our world needs the witness now more than ever, so uh, even we're more, even, even more grateful for you. Let us pray. O oh God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant we pray that they may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Lectura del libro del profeta Isaías. Esto dice el Señor. Cuando renuncies a oprimir a los demás y destieres de ti el gesto amenazador y la palabra ofensiva, cuando compartas tu pan con el ambiente y sacies la necesidad del humillado, brillará tu luz en las tinieblas, y tu oscuridad será como el mediodía. El Señor te dará reposo permanente. En el desierto saciará tu hambre y dará vigor a tu cuerpo. Serás como un huerto bien regado, como un manantial cuyas aguas no se agotan. Construirás sobre tus viejas ruinas y edificarás sobre cimientos muy antiguos. Te llamarán reparador de brechas y restaurador de hogares derruidos. Si detienes tus pasos para no violar el sábado y no tratas tus negocios en mi día santo, si llamas al sábado tu delicia, y lo consagras a la gloria del Señor. Si lo honras absteniéndote de viajes, de buscar tu interés, de tratar tus asuntos, entonces el Señor será tu delicia. Te asentaré sobre mis montañas. Te haré gustar la herencia de tu padre, Jacob. Palabra de Dios. Señor, enséñame tus caminos. Señor, enséñame tus caminos. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord. Jesus saw a tax collector named Levi sitting at the customs post. He said to him, follow me. And leaving everything behind, he got up and followed him. Then Levi gave a great banquet for him in his house and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were at table with them. The Pharisees and the scribes complained to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus said to them in reply, Those who are healthy do not need a physician, but the sick do. I have not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Those to be instituted in the ministry of lector Please come forward. Isidro Abreu. William Chirinos. Jose Diaz. Sergio Diaz. Richard Ferreira. Paul Floor.
Herman Gonzalez. Vidal Gonzalez Zelaya. Francisco Hauridis. Fritz Molina. Hernando Patino. Freddy Perez. Pedro Sanchez. Jose Suarez. Ubaldo Valdez. seated. All of us are certainly familiar with the gospel which we hear today, the call of Levi, the call of Matthew. For us, it's certainly a nice story. And it makes us think about God's call to each of us to follow him, to be his disciples. But to the people of Jesus' day, when he first made this call to Matthew, it must have been mind-boggling, huh? What was Jesus doing? Here he is calling a tax collector one of the worst people in society, to be one of his closest collaborators, to be his disciple. There are many people, they must have thought, who are striving to live in a godly way, righteous people. What's he doing calling this man? Why isn't he calling someone who's more on the path? Yes, today's gospel reminds us that God's love is universal. He calls out to all his children in love, in mercy. Jesus, of course, could have limited his call and even his ministry to be only with those who were striving to live in a godly way those who were striving to be righteous. But he doesn't limit it. He reaches out to all in love. For St. Luke, holiness for the follower of Jesus is manifested through showing mercy and compassion for others, regardless of who they are or even whether they deserve it. That means we're following Jesus' example when we do this. St. Luke's Gospel emphasizes the compassion of God towards the suffering, the destitute, the disadvantaged, more than any other Gospel. I'm sure you've studied this already in your scripture classes, comparing St. Luke's Gospel to the other three. For St. Luke, it's mercy. That's the defining characteristic of God. 
And therefore, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it must also be the defining characteristic of every follower of Jesus, of every disciple. Mercy. We show this mercy in three ways, huh, as disciples. As followers of Jesus, we're told do not judge others. Disciples do not condemn others. And disciples readily forgive others. The disciples' motivation to act in these merciful ways is not the possibility of reward, the disciples' own moral goodness, or even based on fear of punishment. Rather, it's based on God's own response to each of us. If we judge others, then we're told that God will judge us with that same criteria and standards. We actually pray this every day, huh? How many times throughout a day do we pray those words in the Our Father? We ask God to judge us as we judge others as we pray the Our Father. And the words come so easily to our lips, huh? That's what we ask. If we judge others, the same standard will be applied to us. If we condemn others, then God will condemn us with the same severity. If we forgive, if we're men and women of forgiveness, then God will forgive us. And that's something we all need. As disciples, you and I must be motivated by our own desire to experience God's mercy in our lives, period. This motivation must guide how we show mercy to others. God will use for us the same standard we use for one another. This is certainly a profoundly challenging teaching that could, should cause us to carefully examine our own instructions, our own ministry and future ministry. It's profoundly challenging. God's mercy must be something always in our hearts. For as he has been merciful to us, so we are to be merciful to others. And we know he's merciful to us because he's called us. He's called us to be his disciples. Right here, 2021, in this beautiful church in Metuchen. He's called us to bring his love and mercy to all in need of it. And he desires to give it to all. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. He tells us in the gospel today. And thanks be to God for that, huh? Because it includes us. The call to be his disciple and the further call to lay down our lives in service of our brothers and sisters. That's what you're preparing for, to be this disciple of mercy and what 11 you will be to our entire diocese. And how proud our Latino community will be to have such men and examples to come forth from their communities to be 11 for our local church. As God calls the sinner, as God calls all, so he calls each of us.
to be his disciples, to be his ministers of mercy, to make this message of St. Luke known to all we encounter. My brothers, to be installed today, this lesson and task on mercy is entrusted to you in a special way. Through his son, who became man for us, God the Father has revealed the mystery of salvation and has brought it to fulfillment. Jesus Christ made all things known to us and then he entrusted his church with the mission of preaching to the whole world to make his love and mercy known. As readers and bearers of God's word, you will assist in this great mission of mercy. And so take on a special office within the church. You'll be given this special responsibility in service of the faith, which is rooted always in the word of God. You will proclaim this in word and by your actions, the witness of your lives. But in a special way today, we focus on your proclamation of the word in the liturgical assembly, instructing children and adults in the faith and preparing them to receive the sacraments worthily. You'll bring that message of salvation to those who don't know it or don't know it fully. Thus, with your help, men and women will come to know God the Father more fully and his son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent, and so be able to help others reach eternal life. What a privilege and honor, huh? That of all the people, God chose you. In his mercy. Because he loves you. No other reason. The gospel tells us today we're not worthy. The gospel reminds us that there's nothing we can do to make ourselves worthy. It's just opening our hearts to that love of God. Spending time daily with the word of God in prayer. Kneeling before him, present in the Eucharist, standing before the crucifix, looking at the wounds of Christ, and knowing that he did that for you. He did that for all of us, but each of us individually. Pope Francis tells us by focusing on the wounds of Jesus, it makes us more sensitive to the wounds of other people that we encounter. When we know of Jesus' wounds for us and his desire to share his love with us in that way, it makes us notice the wounds of others and desire to share his love for healing with them. So proclaim God's word well, huh? Both by what you say and by what you do. The renewal of our church of Metuchen will only come about in this way. The renewal of the face of the earth will only come about in this way because it'll become more like God made it by our actions. It makes God present right in our midst where charity and love are there is God. And that's your job as a disciple. That's what
what's entrusted to us. And how much more so for a man who says, I lay down my life, taking on the servanthood of Christ himself. Yes, God chooses you for this task. And that's something to celebrate. That's something to thank God for. And it certainly is something that should motivate us to imitate him always. In proclaiming God's word to others, accept it yourself in obedience to the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Meditate on the word constantly so that each day you will have a deeper love of the scriptures. And in all you say and do, show forth to the people of our diocese, believers or not, people striving to live in a godly way, and even those who are not, show forth Jesus Christ. And not just your own thoughts, not just what you personally believe, but Jesus, always Jesus, and what he wants to give to that person in front of you. You can do it. It's challenging, but we do it because we know God's mercy and love for us. I've not come to call the righteous, but sinners. God calls every person he's made, which is everybody in the world, huh? And he uses me and you to have the privilege of reaching out in his name. So know of my gratitude to you, to your wives, to your families, to our brother deacons who are helping to form you, to prepare you for this life of service. And know of my gratitude to each of you for your generosity in giving yourself to the word so that you can give it to others. Know of my love and my prayers for your continued path. God bless you. Will all please stand? My brothers and sisters, let us ask God our Father to bless the servants who have been chosen for the ministry of lector. Let us pray that they may be faithful to the work entrusted to them. Proclaim Christ, <clears throat> Christ to the world, and so give glory to our Father in heaven. Lord God, source of all goodness and light, you sent your only Son the word of life to reveal to mankind the mystery of your love. Bless our brothers who have been chosen for this ministry of lector. Grant that as they meditate constantly on your word, they may grow in its wisdom and faithfully, faithfully proclaim it to your people through Christ our Lord.
take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the Word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Amen. Hands underneath it. Take it underneath. Yeah. Take this book of Holy Scriptures and be faithful in handing on the Word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Amen. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the Word of God so that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. Amen. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the word of God. Will so make you strong in the let of me be your servant? Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the, the grace to Take this book of Holy let Scripture you be and be faithful in handing on the word of God. So that it may grow strong in the hearts of his people. strong in the hearts of his people. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be faithful in handing on the word of God. I so will weep when you are weeping. When you laugh, I'll laugh with you. Take I will share God. your joy Go and sorrow. Take this book of Holy Scripture and be this on the word of God. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find Take such a money. More of all we've known together of Christ's love and agony. strong in the hearts of his people. Just a couple of quick thank yous. We'd like to thank the Office of Worship, the Office of Communication and their staffs, and Kathy Sinclair of the Office of the Diaconate for uh, doing all the uh, work that needs to be done to put on this beautiful prayer service. And also want to say a special thank you to Deacon Edgar Chavez, who is the formation director for this class and uh, deals with them on a daily basis for all the uh, problems or the joys and the challenges that they experience. He does a tr tremendous job for the diocese and we're very grateful. And to our gracious host 
ever, huh? Thanks for the cathedral, Monsignor, and all your staff, huh? For that listening. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the word of God. Thanks be to God. Oh. 